Good afternoon. This is Jan Hoffmann from ANCTAT, and I'm very happy to join you for this important event. Let me share screen so that we can then join and speak about uh, the trade logistics shipping context in the context of empowering informed decisions for a better tomorrow. My presentation is based on the review of maritime transport, our UNCTAD flagship publication about shipping and port developments. Let me start with some long-term trends. We see that logistics services over the years have improved. By way of example, in the United States, the share of logistics expenditure that goes into uh, inventory holding, warehousing, depreciation, insurance costs has been going down because transport and trade station have become more efficient. We have also seen more, I would call it globalization. Cargo travels longer and longer distances on average, long-term trends. We have also seen the long-term trend of an increased share of developing countries in global maritime trade. And then came COVID, which saw especially container freight rates increase five to sevenfold. What explains those, uh, this, this impact, what, what happened? Uh, allow me some words on basic shipping economics. The demand for transport is what we call relatively inelastic. You need a big change in shipping cost to have a small change in demand because we really need this iPhone for Christmas, really need this spare part to continue our production, really need this fuel. So relatively steep. The supply in shipping is often drawn like here, which means for a long time, it, uh, if there's enough capacity, freight rates are low, but if we reach a capacity limit, freight rates and, and prices can go up a lot. For many years, we had a freight rate A. During COVID, we saw two things. First, demand went up because we ordered more things online. And many of these things were made, especially in China and other East Asian countries. On the supply side, ships spent more time in port. We had congestion, we had waiting times, which reduced the effective supply. The result is the increase in the freight rate reflected here by the going from A to B. And now we are back. We are back to very low freight rates with a recent surge, which has to do with the crisis in the Red Sea. However, this is not so much the topic here, happy to discuss. Uh, it does just show how vulnerable this situation can be and how we are not protected from future crisis. So you see how it has surged again, the container freight rate. During COVID, we saw actually a change in the long-term trends. So let me go back to my three long-term trends. Why we saw improvements, for example, in the United States for decades, the last two years, the share on inventory holding expenditure went up because of inefficiency. Expenditure on transport also went up, but expenditure on warehousing, depreciation, capital cost insurance went up even more. We do expect and hope that in the longer term, we will go back to the positive longer term trajectory. Similarly, during COVID, actually the distance went slightly down, but this is not really a change in trend. If we look at the latest data, we see how the distances in some commodities have actually increased. This here also has to do with the war in Ukraine. When um, Egypt no longer buys or can obtain grain from Ukraine, but has to 
buy it from further away from the United States or Brazil. Or oil that used to go from Russia to Europe now goes to India, for example. And we, the third long-term trend also saw a hiccup. <laughs> for the first time, the share of developing countries in unloaded, the volume of goods unloaded, slightly decreased, but the latest data is again back to the previous trajectory. Now, this is the big picture what has happened. What is the key challenge for the future? It is the energy transition. Um, and here, based on our review of maritime transport, we have some bad news. In spite of all efforts and really sincere efforts by industry, by the International Maritime Organization, by governments, emissions from shipping over the last 10 years have actually increased while they should have decreased. The positive side is the emissions per ton of cargo or per ton mile have decreased, especially in container shipping. This is good news. This means that trade had grown even more than emissions. So the emissions per trade have actually gone down. So we had one bad news, one good news, and now comes again, I'm spoiling this good news because about half of the improvement that we have seen in the reduction of emissions per ton mile are due to economies of scale. And we don't really like ships getting bigger and bigger. These, this poses challenges for the ports, for door-to-door -door logistics costs. But it is also true that bigger ships, you see on the left, the blue bars, the bigger a ship is, the less it emits per ton mile. I am not promoting and saying that we should build ever bigger ships, but I'm just saying that we need to do more to reduce emissions from all types of ships. So let me conclude this short intervention with some outlook challenges. A key challenge here is that the, we don't quite have enough ships. It's a very short, simplified general picture I'm presenting here, but think that um, the, the order book, the world tonnage of new ships on order is very low compared to the long-term picture. While it should be be going up. We need more ships, we need better ships, we need more modern ships, but investors are waiting. They are waiting because we don't yet know what will be the future price of CO2 emissions, what will be the future technology, what will be the future regulation. There are some good goals and targets set at the International Maritime Organization in London, but um, in my view, it is still not quite enough to encourage the investment that we need in new ships. On the positive side, there are opportunities, three opportunities. Developing countries, many countries, not only developing, but also India, could become providers of alternative fuels. No, there's a benefit there if we use fuels that are not based on oil, more countries can become providers. Opportunity number two, if, as, as we hope at UNCTAD, member states of the IMO agree on an economic measure, on a, on a levy or some other mechanism to have a price for carbon that makes alternative fuels more competitive, the funds generated with such a measure can be invested in port infrastructure, in trade station, in shipping connectivity. And this can then uh, remedy some of the otherwise increasing shipping costs. Last but not least, our industry, shipping, really has an opportunity. The maritime industry has a, the historical opportunity to be ahead of the curve as it can shape one global multilateral framework. Other industries need to implement many national frameworks where there's a risk of free riders and no global enforcement. In shipping, we have an opportunity. We can create a global regulatory framework uh, for all with a level playing field, uh, field for, for all. Um, these and many other things will be discussed in 
May, 21 to 24 May, for your agenda, please join us in our Global Supply Chain Forum in Barbados. I will stop here and been, um, I will stop sharing and I'm open to questions, suggestions uh, during the seminar or by email or via LinkedIn. Uh, we are all here for you. Thank you very much.